In this video, I'm going to be showing you a sonic weapon that I created that prevents people from speaking coherently. I think it was June or... <laughs> Selections, damn it, that's hard. Are you, uh, where? It's like an invisible audio laser, and if I point it at your head, you will hear it, and if I point it just one foot away from your head, you will hear nothing. And it literally prevents the vast majority of people from speaking well. It makes you stutter, jumble up words, speak slowly, or just outright stop speaking entirely. The first concept of this I tried out back in 2004, and since then, I've had a lot of different devices that I've tried out on a lot of different people inside my home. But the real test was taking it to a public, loud, distracting environment and try to not only stop people from communicating their thoughts, but stop them from being able to read out loud. So last weekend in a busy Hyatt hotel lobby, I offered people $100 if they could simply read the intro paragraph from this book out loud to me. But first, I had a really big problem to solve. The devices I'm using are not portable, sleek, or in any way discreet. I'm using hypersonic sound arrays, which already look kind of weird, but they also use a lot of power. Just for the effect to be noticeable, we need about four amps at 48 volts, which is already more than what the average household refrigerator uses, so I needed a really large battery bank. So if I just brought all of this to a restaurant or a park or something and set it all up and started pointing it at people, I would be escorted out immediately if not arrested or murdered. But I did find one place where I would blend in perfectly the hotel lobby of KnobCon in Arlington Heights, Illinois. KnobCon is a yearly event that seems to cater to the farthest and darkest corner of music production from DIY modular synthesizers to experimental sound making devices. It's like NAM crossed with a two day electronics course crossed with Comic Con. So on a Saturday night at KnobCon, the public hotel lobby and bar area is already completely filled with insane looking sound making devices. So I fit right in. Okay, so how does this technologically work? If you don't care about this incredibly mind-blowing phenomenon, suit yourself and go ahead and skip ahead to the next chapter. Otherwise, first hypersonic sound, which is what a lot of people and patents call it, I like to call it a sound laser. If I point a sound laser over here, you likely won't hear anything. If a surface is very reflective over there, you may actually hear some of that sound reflecting off of that surface as if it were a speaker over there. Now, if I played an airplane sound through my sound laser and moved it like this, it would bounce off the ceiling and it would literally sound like an airplane was flying overhead across the room. If I point it directly at you, you will hear sound from what seems like the inside of your head. Why? So there's this acoustic phenomenon called Tartini tones where two high pitched frequencies can make the psychoacoustic effect of a single lower tone which you will think that you're hearing. Adam Neely made an excellent video on this years ago with some demonstrations. There's a link in the description. An easy way to visualize how this works would be taking a high-pitched sound wave and then putting another high-pitched sound wave of a slightly different frequency over it, and when combined, a newer, lower-pitched sound can be formed. Tartini tones are typically or classically demonstrated with high-pitched instruments, but here we're going to be going way out of the range of human hearing from about 40,000 hertz all the way to 150,000 hertz, and a large honeycomb array of small speakers will be transmitting these high frequencies to my volunteers' heads, which will then demodulate them. So right now, as long as you're watching this video and are anywhere near civilization, you are inside a symphony of sound or pressure waves that are outside of your range of hearing. And this is actually not that different from the inaudible carrier frequencies of an AM or FM radio station. My test subjects' heads will literally be the receivers. But how does that prevent them from speaking? Now, the other half of this weapon will require exploiting a phenomenon called delayed auditory feedback, which is simply jamming the brain by playing a delayed sample of an individual's speech and shooting the signal back at them. If you've ever been Skyping or FaceTiming or in a Zoom call with somebody and you hear your own voice coming back to you and it makes it hard for you to concentrate and speak, it's like that, but on crack. Certain latencies or delays between the time you hear your voice coming back affects different people differently. An extremely fast and fluent speaker will start choking on their words when they hear a longer latency or delay. 
and people less comfortable or fluent with speaking will struggle the most with shorter delays. Children and adults typically have different ideal speech jamming latency times. A very interesting random piece of trivia, delayed auditory feedback can actually help people with stuttering disorders speak more clearly, and it's actually used as a therapy for that. So over the years, I've used everything from audio processing boards to Raspberry Pi proto boards to process the audio delays, but now I have this. It's an Empress Zoya pedal, and the Zoya is a powerful pedal that basically allows you to make your own effects or your own pedal. The Zoya can detect peaks and pitch on the input, which allowed me to essentially make it detect words and syllables, and those randomly trigger the time difference with granular effects. Now, the person reading the paragraph doesn't hear anything yet, but when I press this button, It'll send that chopped up speech at a slightly higher and lower volume and pitch to the hypersonic sound arrays, shooting it directly into their skull. Now, ideally, this is done with a highly directional shotgun microphone, and that's the way I've always tested it at home. But if something in the DSP malfunctioned, it could create feedback. And I cannot express how uncomfortable feedback would be from a hypersonic sound array pointed at your head. So safety first. So back to the Hyatt Hotel lobby at KnobCon. There are no actors here. Most of the people participating in this had absolutely no idea what was going on, and I suppose a few of them still don't. But the challenge is easy enough. The first person who can read a relatively simple paragraph from this book gets $100 cash. It's time. Let's do it. If you could read the paragraph up to terminology without making a mistake, you will get $100. Instead of focusing on creative music take, making tip. Do I, do I stop now? Yeah, you're done. Yeah, Sorry, man. <laughs> Conversations with the original designers of these synths and engineers and product managers who worked with them when they were in production. Original source material. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta call it. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. <laughs> it's so disorienting because I can't tell if I'm saying the thing. Yeah. So instead of focusing on creative music making tips as we do in most of our other titles, this book is dedicated to the <laughs> <laughs> You're holding this book in your hands because of many people's passion for vintage synthesizers. With this book, I wanted to... <laughs> All you have to do is push this select button to send my voice to me. I wanted to honor and celebrate the creations of synth makers to show vintage synthesizers... <laughs> Let's try some faces that are hopefully familiar to you. If they're not, you should definitely subscribe to their channels, but they happen to be really good at reading scripts and speaking to camera. A simple online search will uncover many un collections. Damn it, that's hard. <laughs> I had it for a minute there. <laughs> Next. A simple online search will uncover many collections of blurry pictures surrounded by information that isn't always well researched. Here, we're trying to do the opposite. Some readers will know many of the synths presented here. Others will, I hate this so much. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it, but I don't like it. Okay, that's like it. All right, we got it, all right. I give up. Thank you. <laughs> but there was one person who, to everyone's amazement, breezed through the speech jammer. Keegan. And Keegan had one distinct attribute that set him apart from every single person who took the test. He wasn't a musician. Articles in print magazines with established and trustworthy credentials. Online sources are not quoted directly without independent corroboration from other sources. Regarding the images, we've chosen to show the synthesizers from angles that balance aesthetics and functionality. For historical documentation purposes, we identify them with their unique serial numbers whenever possible. Wow! <laughs> Are you sure it worked? It, it worked, you did it. But maybe Keegan is just a really, really good reader. So I tried casual conversation, which by the way, is much, much more difficult to do with a speech jammer than simply reading text. I don't like the sound of my own voice. I never have. I can't pick up a voicemail even. I mean, it's just like torture. Right, so I feel like I have that in common with everybody else who's tried. And astoundingly, Keegan was completely unaffected by it. Part of me feels like I should have been way more rigorous and gotten more useful scientific data taken away from all of this, but sometimes it's okay to do experiments without trying to publish a paper. 
and sometimes a question's answer leading to more questions is a great thing. That's how we figure out how the world around us works. So as I was demonstrating and explaining this to some people at KnobCon, I was asked if I was concerned if this would be used for evil. And no, not really. It's an extremely expensive prank. It's not like you can just go to a White House press event and point random electronics at the president and survive anyway. I suppose the most menacing thing you could really do is point it at a news anchor, but even then, they could just move one foot to the left and completely leave the field of sonic pressure. I wanna give a huge thank you and just general props to everybody who trusted me to shoot a sonic weapon at them and participated in my video. You are awesome. Thank you so much for participating. I wanna thank Bjooks, Bjooks for supplying the reading material. I've purchased a few of their books in the past and they're beautifully designed and full of excellent info. Finally, a huge thank you to my Patreon members for making this video and experiment possible without any sponsors. In fact, Jay here organizes Sim Selections, our community's monthly songwriting challenge, which will inspire you to challenge yourself to become a better musician. If you want to be part of that, or if you want to support this channel, or if you want to have access to loads of assets and content, my Patreon is as little as one dollar. Thanks for watching. Bye.